This is the Bulls Chat Podcast. I am Joe Malone, and with me is the head coach and general manager of the North Iowa Bulls, Todd Sandin. Coach, a couple of good games against New Ulm at the Mason City Arena on Friday and Saturday night, and also thank you for being here. Thank you, Joe. appreciate the opportunity. Now, after falling to New Ulm uh, 4-2 the previous weekend, the Bulls answer back Friday night 7-2, Saturday night, um, we'll say even better, 7-1. Um, we'll start with the Friday night uh, tilt, and it was a back and forth first period. Bulls score, New Ulm scores. Bulls score, New Ulm scores. Bulls finally get the lead near the end of the first period and hang on to it. Uh, talk to me about the start of that game and what shifted to uh, let the Bulls um, be a little bit more defensive while being still offensive in the uh, uh, latter stages of the game. I, you know what? I, I think it's a bit of a personnel thing. Like we we added. Uh, we we had guys out on you know COVID quarantine, not positive tests in our group, but um, you know perimeter contact, so doing the right thing. Obviously, we have our guys out uh, for that quarantine period, and, and just having those guys back in the lineup Friday and Saturday. I mean, that makes a big difference. Um, you know, last Friday when we were up there, we only dressed eighteen guys, and we can dress twenty one um, right now. So. Personnel, I think, was the biggest factor in just how, how much better our start was for us on Friday night. And then um, was there a, a shift that took place in between the first and second and, well, it, leading into third period where um, you're, you go into the locker room with the lead, you've seen that New Elm can do some damage to you, but then you shut it down from that point out. Yeah, you, you know what? I was really impressed with our group's effort for 120 minutes of hockey this week, and, and that's something we're always trying to – play a good solid full 60 minutes and, and it, it's escaped us um, up until this weekend and, and I think that's a that's a big key too when our team is able to go out there shift after shift and create opportunities and grind when you need to and and even once in a while just survive a shift and not get scored on like I, I just we felt really good after the first period and that, and that we came back and got that lead going into the second and then I think guys were everybody was feeling good about it, and we got a great effort out of everybody because of that. Uh, one of the uh, folks that you got a great effort from was Jack Campion. Two goals on the night. Talk to me about uh, his performance on Friday night's game. You know what? Obviously, we we believe that Jack's a, an awesome hockey player, and on that line with Carson Jones and and Kyle Heffron, um, th- that's a pretty skilled line. And just for those guys to um, get puck zipping around, and, and they were really good on Saturday night as well. But um, Jack's a good player; he gets himself in good spots, and he works hard. Like he he works hard to get open for for good chances. And another good number from the game on Friday night: three for five on the power play. That had to have you smiling after the game. Yeah, you know, it's always our goal that our, our special teams are going to be positively impactful in the games. And certainly when you go three for five, um, and we were five for five on the kill, like uh, our special teams play was amazing on Friday night. Now, on Saturday, I, I am, when I go to a sporting event, I try and not leave early, if at all possible, depending on how the kids are behaving. And I always want to make sure that I'm there on time so I don't miss anything. If you were not in your seat, <laughs> Uh, when the puck dropped on Saturday night, you missed the first goal of the game because it was uh, 35 seconds in, and Garrett Freeman got a goal for the Bulls, and uh, that it, that's got to be a great way to start a game. You know that that play set up like w- with Ben Lukey just doing a cross corner chip, and then Braden Utek winning a race and, and centering a puck to Freeman going to the net, and it was just such a bang bang play and. I don't even think the the new home goalie had the anthem out of his head yet. I mean, it was it was so quick, and nobody had time to settle into the game, and we're up one nothing. Uh, now, um, in addition to uh, starting uh, with a, a quick goal like that, um, was that the best first period of the year for the Bulls? I think there was maybe one penalty on the Bulls, three goals, so you're up three nothing after one. And um, you, you talk about how having a slow start has been kind of a thing. This was mm-hmm. not that at all. No, I, and, and that's something, as you know, like in our pregame show with Austin Drowdy, we're always concerned with having a good quick start. And I think just getting that and really feeding off the energy of Friday night and the momentum that the kids built on Friday night, 
it was just a continuation, and we saw the same effort from all four lines, and our decor was solid and, and zipping pucks around. So I, I think you, you, I don't know that we've had a better first period this year, and it, and it certainly is comforting for a coach when you have a 3 nothing lead after one. Now, the victory, the 7-1 win on Saturday night over New Ulm for the Bulls, was Caleb Mayer's first as a Bull, and it was also his 19th birthday. Uh, talk to me about his play, and did you start him because it was his birthday? Did that weigh into that decision at all? No, I, I think after after last Friday, he played the game up in New Ulm on, on last Friday. You know, him and, him and uh, Evan Babacool, who are both grinding it out all week in practice. Like we wanted to get Babs back in there for a game uh, Friday night. And, and really we wanted to kind of get that taste out of, out of uh, Caleb's mouth too, and, and get him a start on Saturday. Both guys worked really hard last week in practice and were really good. So uh, it just kind of worked out that he got to play on his birthday and he got some, he got some goal support this week uh, that he didn't get last Friday up in New Home. And in addition to the goal support, he got some team support as well. It's one of those things you don't even want to do a drive-by on the other team's goalie because that's considered uh, not cool. But uh, there was some contact made with uh, Mayer late in the game, and uh, the Bulls um, kind of answered back in, in a way that led to a 10-minute misconduct for uh, a New Elm player and then um, immediate puck drop after that, some fisticuffs. Talk to me about the team uh, standing up for one of their own and trying to say, hey, don't be playing that way against us. Yeah, you know, and I, I think everybody knows that we're a team. Like, we want to get up and we want to move pucks quickly up the rink and, and create and have an offensive style of game. But if teams want to mix it up a little bit, we're certainly uh, more than capable and comfortable going that way as well. But uh, in the whole grand scheme of things, I, I think you're right. It's just a situation where a teammate stuck up for a teammate in that in that situation, and that's what you hope happens. Like, uh you don't want guys running around or thinking like they could take liberties against anybody on your team, and it's nice when guys step up and take care of that business. I'll take care of what happens in front of the net. You guys take care of everything else. <laughs> like, <laughs> right on. <laughs> now, um, one of the big questions uh, throughout the weekend, I had a couple of conversations. People were wondering, what is next, uh, not only for the Bulls, but for the West Division, for the NE3HL, um, because of the um, restrictions in place in Minnesota, a number of the Minnesota teams that weren't on the road this weekend uh, didn't play. Um, the Bulls are supposed to be in Granite City this Saturday after Thanksgiving. Where does all of that stand? So a lot of it is still up in the air, Joe. Um, with the Minnesota teams, they, they have petitioned the Minnesota Sports Commission to get an exemption similar to what the North Iowa Bulls have and the USHL teams have uh, in the state of Iowa to continue to play. Now, we don't have any solid, confirmed information on if they're going to get that exempt status, but I've been in contact with our league, and because we're open, it is our intent to try to keep playing somewhere, hopefully here at home or, or on the road if need be. And in, in that regard, like we'll be able to go to other states that are open and play other teams that are available to play. Our league has the mindset that if teams are able to play, we want to keep them playing. Um, and to really go any further into it would um, probably be a bit irresponsible, but it sounds like we're going to have a good opportunity to play um, somewhere next weekend. We don't know where, if it's going to be here, or if it's going to be on the road or even an opponent. Um, but it looks positive for for us to keep playing games. Now, our setup this week, we'll practice today and tomorrow, send our guys home for the Thanksgiving holiday Wednesday and Thursday, and then have them be back and down Friday, uh, maybe to practice or, or hopefully to play a game Friday and Saturday. So th there's a lot of stuff up in the air, but I feel our situation, uh, we're in a positive light with the ability and the opportunity to potentially be able to play games next weekend. So you might end up being a, a barnstorming team for lack of a better we, term. And, and to be honest, like we've played North American League teams in exhibition play, and on the call with the league this morning, I, I told them, like, if any teams need games, like, we don't, obviously we don't think we're going to win those games, but to keep our kids playing, to keep their kids playing, we're more than comfortable in going to do that, too. Obviously, they, they're exhibition games, but the kids just want to play. Our group has been 
pretty healthy. We haven't had any major COVID issues. Um, obviously, we've had a few scares with some some perimeter contact, but we, we haven't had a positive test in our group, either staff or player, um, to date, knock on wood. But, uh, again, very, very fortunate and lucky to, to be there uh, in that situation. But it's it, it looks like we're going to be able to play um, next weekend. Excellent. Well, thank you, because um, that, that was a huge question. A lot of people... I uh, didn't know the answer to or wondering you, you what is what is the next step? What is the plan? And as of uh, Monday here, a little bit before noon, that's what it is. And it could be something completely different Tuesday a little bit before noon. But uh, that's where it yeah, is right now. Th- that's the other part of that, too. I mean, things change daily. And uh, I mean, if our league doesn't find a way to set us up with games, th- then we'll be off next weekend, too. But the, the intent is to have us playing somewhere. Excellent. Head coach, general manager of the North Iowa Bulls, Todd Sinnon, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Joe. I really appreciate it. Stay safe, everyone.